A warm welcome to OmniFocus Workflows with Michael Kirkham Jones, and um, really excited to to have Mike here today. I originally met Mike back in 2015 uh, when he did one of my productivity courses, and and it's um, great to have him here today, showing off at which I th what I think is very unique system. And I'll talk a little bit more about. Uh, what, what's in store in just a moment. Uh, before we get to that, I just wanted to welcome those of you who are new to Learn OmniFocus. Uh, this is a site that's coming up on its sixth anniversary. I think it's June 2nd of 2014 that I officially launched the site, and it's great to have it going strong years later. And the mission of Learn OmniFocus has always been to support people in living a fulfilling and productive uh, life with OmniFocus helping to helping to bring a pr productive aspect to it. And as you've noticed, if you've seen some of the other videos, OmniFocus is one of the productivity apps that's gonna form your productivity system. I often feature other ones as well, and I think Mike's gonna be talking a little bit about some of the other productivity apps that he's using. And it's really uh, having OmniFocus be at the, the focal point for your personal task management. And just the fact that everyone in the community is using OmniFocus makes it a lot easier to talk about specific productivity practices like um, getting things done, my own holistic productivity and so forth. And uh, what you're watching now or maybe attending live is one of the components of what's called Learn OmniFocus Live. So this is one of the services of Learn OmniFocus. And uh, there's a few few different aspects to this. First of all, we have theme sessions very often that cover a certain aspect of productivity. Uh, some of them take a, a deep dive into some of the features in OmniFocus. And so an example of a recent one is mastering reviews with OmniFocus 3. And I'll be talking about another one that's gonna be, uh, gonna be live soon. Uh, we also have workflow guests on very often, uh, just like we were having uh, Mike on today. We've had many workflow guests. so you can get a different taste of the many different ways that OmniFocus can be used. You can see how people are using it in, in different uh, geographies and cultures and professions and things like that. So there's a really rich library of uh, workflow uh, episodes you can go and check out. Uh, there's also office hours. This is one of my favorite parts of Learn OmniFocus personally, and this is where we get together in a small group. Uh, it's a maximum of 10 people, and everyone's asked to be on video, so it's as much like a, an in-person gathering as possible, and um, we discuss OmniFocus, what's working, what's not working, uh, exchange ideas, it's a good place to get advice, even just to get some kind of moral support, and uh, if you're finding your sort of interest in OmniFocus or productivity is waning a little bit, I can pretty much guarantee it'll, it'll get a nice boost by coming to, to one or more of these sessions. And then something I've been doing um, even before Learn OmniFocus existed is doing private consulting around OmniFocus uh, as well as some other productivity apps and that's something I, I definitely uh, continue to enjoy doing. And a little taste of what's, what's coming soon. Uh, first of all, the next live session is um, going to be on managing someday maybe lists with OmniFocus. And we'll talk about where to store this information, the pros and cons to keeping it in OmniFocus, uh, how you can use OmniFocus to make sure that these lists get the appropriate amount of attention regardless of where you're storing it. And there'll be some interactive exercises as we go through the live session. Uh, certainly is always a good opportunity to share your own feedback and, and get some questions in the mix and so forth. So that'll be on June 23rd, and that's from 10 to 11.30 Pacific Daylight Time. Uh, those of you who have been around uh, OmniFocus for a while, no doubt, uh, recognize Kurash Dini. He's based in Chicago and uh, definitely one of the top experts in the world on not just OmniFocus, but productivity in general. And I consider Kurash to be one of my, my first teachers uh, when I was getting into OmniFocus, I think it was in 2010, so about 10 years ago. Um, I picked up his book and uh, really got a lot of value from, from what he had to share not just on in terms of understanding the features, but also understanding the, the methodology that, that has OmniFocus become a useful component. And just yesterday, uh, Grush uh, launched a brand new book. It's called Taking Smart Notes with Devon Think. And Devon Think, I think, is a really nice complement to OmniFocus. It's a repository of information. It's a place where you can capture research and ideas and things like that. And generally speaking, you wouldn't want to keep all of that stuff in OmniFocus um, because it would bloat the system. 
Uh, but it, OmniFocus can still be very useful to make sure that you're engaging with all of that stuff that you've got in Dev and Think appropriately. So I was talking to Karesh um, recently, and he was telling me about the book and so forth, and I thought it would be great to have you back on Learn OmniFocus and just to get your own uh, take on how you're using these, these two apps together. So I'm very happy that he said yes. So on July 15th uh, from 10 to 11 Pacific time, He's going to be joining us on Learn OmniFocus and talking about T, how he takes these, these random ideas and, and finds all the connections in Dev and Think and stores the information there, and then how he uses OmniFocus to take all of that, that stuff that he's captured and turn it into something, something tangible, something useful. So I hope you'll be able to uh, join us for that as well. Uh, there's currently six Learn OmniFocus office hours open for registration. There's uh, three in June and three in July, and I'll keep con adding these into August and uh, can add more sessions as, as the other one starts to fill up. So uh, hopefully uh, at least one of these times will work for you, and it'd be great to see one of these small group sessions. And uh, just before we get to, to Mike's intro, I just want to briefly mention that the LearnOmniFocus.com just under saw a major facelift, and this is something that's uh, been a, a long time in the works, and I'm really happy to have brought it to fruition. So just a few things to point out to help you get the most of the new site. Uh, first of all, the, the homepage uh, has been completely redone. That'll be give you direction in terms of where to go on the site, and also will be dynamically updated as we write new blog posts and add new content and uh, add new things to the Learn Omni Focus Live calendar. So you can get kind of a, use that kind of as a dashboard for them, the site. Uh, also, all of the content has been consolidated into one place, and you can actually uh, filter the the items uh, by the content type, the user level. Uh, there's a more filters button if you want to get even more granular than that, um, just to make it much easier to hone in on what's useful. And one of the most uh, exciting new additions is uh, some of the longer form content is now available in a course format. Um, so you can mark sections complete, um, and then you can keep track of how far into the course you are. So maybe it's not practical to sit down for two hours and go through a whole course. Uh, but this way you can actually go through it at your own pace and uh, kind of absorb the material, try out some of the techniques, and then you can also jump back to those sections that you want to review. So there's currently 11 courses available in the library, and um, I'll be adding more in the, the coming weeks and months. Uh, there's a knowledge base as well. Uh, it's got mainly support articles at the moment, but I'm really looking forward to growing this out over time so it can become a really useful repository of um, OmniFocus related information. Okay, and without further ado, I'm, I'm really happy to introduce uh, Michael or Mike uh, Kirkman-Jones, who is joining us from Wales. And he has a uh, lot of uh, really interesting work experience from the past. He's a seasoned portfolio and project manager. He has 20 years of experience as a programmer. Uh, is, uh, one of his claims to fame, he is one of the first uh, Java developers at IBM. Also worked as a uh, database administrator at Oracle. Um, and not surprisingly, he's uh, very much into to automation. He's gonna be talking about his use of shortcuts today. And uh, this is uh, a session that's gonna be focusing entirely on the iPad. So if you're not maybe giving your iPad as much airtime as it deserves, or maybe you're even iPad only. Uh, with OmniFocus, I think this session will really uh, give you lots of great inspiration to really put this device to, to good use. Um, I can encourage you to check out Mike's uh, website and blog. So it's kirkham-jones.co, and I'll include that link in the, the notes that go with the recording as well. And in particular, uh, he recently published a Part one of his workflow that uh, includes OmniFocus, GTD, and flying. And if you're curious about what those three things uh, have in common, uh, stay tuned. Mike's going to be talking about his, uh, I think, very creative approach to, to organizing OmniFocus. Okay, well, at this point, I'd like to uh, hand it over to you, Mike. So I'd uh, give you a quick uh, introduction to who I am, what I am. Um, as you could see earlier, I'm living in Wales in the sunny beach uh, of uh, the tropics, <laughs> I wish, but it's nice, uh, it's nice here at the moment. Um, I'm a husband, got, been married 32 years, 
um, father, got three daughters, all grown up now, uh, all left the house. I'm a grandfather, got a two-year-old and uh, a six-month-year-old. Um, they both call me, well, no, the older one calls me Bear, um, primarily because I don't want to be called Granddad. So I came up with something else, and uh, for some reason he decided to call me Bear anyway. Um, I've, as Tim said, I've been a programmer, I've been a DBA person, I've, I've done loads of things. Uh, I programmed in Java was the, the primary language, then moved to uh, PHP, uh, database languages, SQL. Uh, so a whole host of, uh, of technical side of things. And then uh, I finally uh, decided to move along and go into project management. So project management I've done for um, coming up to 15 years now, 15, 20 years, somewhere between. So I've moved from uh, project manager, all technical, all within the uh, software and uh, in IT infrastructure environments, and then moved to portfolio manager. So managing a, a portfolio of project managers. Currently studying my master's for um, project management. Um, I'm also a, a trained body language and lie detection trainer. So uh, I took this on because I, I thought it'd be quite useful for project management. When I sat down with my sponsors and my stakeholders, I thought, ah, I can tell what you're doing. <laughs> so uh, yeah, very useful. So I, I was quite uh, eager to train my staff at the same time, but uh, never got round to it, unfortunately. Um, I'm a semi-professional artist. I have, I do painting. I used to paint in watercolor, then moved to uh, oils uh, and sold quite a few oil paintings. And now I currently do pastels and uh, pencil uh, drawings. So that's in my spare time to get my mind off uh, the uh, IT side of things. I've used the iPad since birth. Uh, basically, uh, the day it came out, I ran down and uh, I bought the iPad. And ever since then, I've been using the iPad. Uh, you could say uh, instead of my laptop machine, um, because I haven't had a laptop machine, we haven't been able to afford it at the time. So uh, I've used the uh, laptops and PCs uh, in where I've been working. But uh, certainly for home, uh, I've uh, concentrated on the, the iPad and continue to buy them as they came through and currently have the iPad Pro 2018 11-inch uh, uh, model at the moment with its uh, brand new keyboard, which is uh, unbelievably brilliant. Uh, makes a huge change from the, uh, the old keyboard. And OmniFocus I've been using, well, just before I met uh, Tim, actually, so uh, around about 2014, uh, I got into OmniFocus. Before then, I tried every other uh, task management system going. Um, and, uh, well, that never came to, uh, they never came to much. I I was hunting and hunting for the the ideal system. Uh, the one that I, I, probably one that I could tweak to, uh, to work for myself. And, uh, well, I finally moved into OmniFocus. What I want to go through today is, is three, I want to go through three areas. I want to look at my, uh, my projects area, uh, projects and folders area, uh, and just run you through that. Then I want to run through the uh, perspectives uh, that I've drawn up and, and those drive my workflow. And then I want to look at what's driving the workflow from behind. Uh, as Tim said, I use a couple of different tools. I don't tie myself down to tools, by the way. If there is a tool that does the job and does the job better, uh, I will bring that tool in. Uh, and therefore, I have to th think about that uh, when I build my uh, shortcuts on the back end. And, and I'll show you that uh, as we go through. Uh, so I want to start off with uh, the projects and folders. I spent years using OmniFocus and finding that uh, it was great to have a workflow but the workflow didn't teach me how to uh, store my files and put everything to in, in a tidy fashion. And I've never been a good uh, person at, at being able to keep things tidy. I mean, you can ask my wife, she'll tell you all the, uh, all the terrible things that I do. I 
was getting desperate because there were files everywhere and I can't afford to do that in the, in the jobs that I do. I, I mean, I, I work for the MOD uh, part of the time, the Ministry of Defence, so I've got to be able to know where my project files are uh, and how I'm storing them. And so I read up and came across something by uh, Tiago Forte uh, in his uh, Second Brain course, and that was the, the para way of uh, storing uh, files uh, and structuring things on the uh, on the database and back end side and so i've set that up uh, as my uh, file system uh, as far as folders and projects go so uh, on the top of uh, all of this i have a projects folder uh, and within that projects folder obviously i'm going to store all my projects uh, a whole list of projects. Um, I'll go into in a bit more detail about the uh, the project numbering and, and but basically to say that I I try to create a unique identifier for each of my projects uh, and that stems from my work. I, I use the iPad as a work tool and at home as well as a as a tool to to manage my tasks at home. So within work, I've got to be able to quickly identify what tasks are what and, and how they're relating to the project management side of things. Uh, and so I create a, uh, a unique identifier for that. So within uh, the projects folder, uh, it does what it says on the wrapper. It, it holds all my projects. So every project in here uh, is captured. Uh, one thing that uh, I did get from Tiago's uh, course was that uh, mentioning about goals. He was talking about how goals uh, and projects should be related together. Uh, now, I had never really tied my projects up with a goal uh, until I listened to one of Diego's talks. And he came up with the saying that a project without a goal is basically a hobby. And he said, a goal without a project is a dream. And, and for some reason, that really struck home to me. I, I thought, yeah, I, I understand that. I know how that works. And I took that. And now I make sure that all my projects, there is a goal and all my projects work towards that goal. Uh, and it's very clear what that goal is. So I just wanted to, uh, to jump in there with that one, because uh, later on, you'll see in Airtable that I do hold all this information as well. Areas. This is areas of focus, so we're concentrating on uh, things like health, uh, family, finance. So again, in here, I have tasks that are related to, uh, for example, health. Uh, we've got other things, uh, examples with family, uh, finance, uh, etc., and things like that. So we're basically catching up the, uh, the tasks that are very related to areas that of responsibility that I have and I capture those here. Uh, if there is a, uh, for example, with uh, apartment, if there is a, a piece of work that I need to, uh, that I think is too big to hold in here, uh, it's not small enough to, to hold as a, in the area of responsibility, uh, that's then moved into the projects area and managed as a project. Uh, for example, I'm refitting the bathroom at the moment. That's not something that I could fit in here. These these are small tasks that I'm able to do quite quickly. They're they're, they're very small uh, in the size. Jump over to here. Uh, resources. Uh, resources is an area where I hold everything that I am interested in. So if, for example, my wife and I are watching sailing programs at the moment and we're quite interested and thinking about buying a, a yacht. Uh, and so what I might do is pull all the information that I have or I'm picking up and store it in the resources section. Uh, I'm also, as I said, I'm doing a uh, master's degree. So I will pull all the information into the from the master's degree and any resources uh, I will fit uh, in this section. And finally, I got the archive. As soon as the project's finished, it'll get dropped into the archive. Uh, as soon as I've finished with anything from the resources section, that gets dropped into the archive as well. So that's uh, that's how I'm storing information. Uh, and this is replicated. Uh, I have a, 
a shortcut script that goes away and it creates the same file structure in iCloud. Uh, there's the same file structure when I was using it in Evernote. Uh, I got the same file structure in drafts. So I, I keep the structure uh, exactly the same across the board and the same information, all type of information is stored in each of those uh, file areas. So if someone does ask me, where is the, uh, this document? I can tell them uh, very quickly, it's in this area. Okay, I'm just going to jump in to my main workflow area now. And these are the perspectives I've, uh, I have. Now, Tim was uh, alluding earlier on that about this aviation form of <laughs> approach. Uh, the reason behind this is that I've tried to, uh, to be a, an evangelist of uh, OmniFocus for a long time. Uh, not just OmniFocus, but GTD and, and trying to uh, bring people along. And quite often it's been very hard to, uh, to get them to understand the actual flow of information, certainly from a GTD perspective, and to get them to remember. And uh, at one point I sat down with a couple of people, uh, and I've got an interest in, in aviation anyway, but I was sat down with uh, a couple of people and we were, we were just talking. And we, we started to discuss GTD. And, and I said, how about the difficulties I was having of, of getting people to understand it? And then we came up with an idea. Well, why not cover it over, uh, put a layer on top of GTD so that it, it's easier ex to explain it? And so I thought, okay, I'll, I'll, let's go with that. Let's, uh, let's have a think. And I came up with this structure that I have at the moment. The, on the ramp, you can think of being on the ramp as the same as the regular inbox. Now, the reason I don't use the regular inbox is that uh, I have three things that, have to, that you have to have to get off the ramp. First of all, it's a project. So uh, a task has to be associated with a project. A task has to uh, have a tag associated with it. So, okay, we've already got those on, on the, the regular inbox. The third thing that I pushed for, and this is uh, primarily from my uh, professional project management side, is that I insist on having an estimate uh, added to everything. So all my tasks, every single task, will have an estimate that I will put to things. And this, again, it, as I said, it stems from my project management uh, time. And I cannot work uh, without having a, a time restraint on a task. I mean, I can't see a task as, as being anything but a, a title unless it's given a time period to actually live in. Uh, and so I make sure that all my tasks have a, uh, an estimate put on top of them. So here we are with the ramp, the ramp area. Think of it as your inbox, except that in here we've got those three, uh, the rules that they have to have those three things in place. So... As you can see, I've got, I've got these test uh, um, tasks in here at the moment. Uh, the first one's got no, uh, no, est no estimate on it. The second one's got no project and no tag. So those, even though they may have the other two, uh, will stay in the on-the-ramp side of things. Those are things that I don't like being on the ramp. And the, the reason I've called it the ramp, or you could call it the uh, apron, uh, which is now called nowadays, is that if you park your plane on the ramp, Every minute, every second that that plane is parked on that ramp, you're losing money. Uh, you're losing money in the fact that you've got to rent that space on the ramp. You've got the rental or the payback on the plane. You've got maintenance costs. So the longer you leave the plane, the more you've got to maintain it, etc. So if, the longer you've got a plane that sat on that ramp, uh, the more cost is going to be. And that's another thing that... I was able to, to tell the people I was trying to teach or, or to bring up to speed with GTT is the longer I have a, a task on here, the more it's costing me in probably time, but it's also costing me in the fact that I'm, I'm not going to be, be remembering it or it, it'll get pushed to one side. So that, that was the importance of, of, of calling it the ramp. Anything sat on the ramp, it's, it's being charged out. It's costing me money. Um, basically, the setup is anything that's available. Uh, I don't want any projects or groups uh, listed in it. It's got to be untagged. 
uh, it's got to come from any of these folders uh, and it's got to have a, an estimated duration on it. Basically the, exactly the same as what you'd see in a, uh, in, a in the inbox uh, setup, except that in this circumstance, I've got this chap here, which is the estimated duration. Uh, and I insist that uh, that's got to be in place. So in this way of doing it, it's saying if there is no no estimation in place, then it, it's going to stay there. Uh, it's going to come up in the uh, perspective and be listed. Uh, and as far as presentation goes, I've got uh, individual actions. I mean, that's uh, reasonably flexible. I, I, I wasn't too concerned about uh, uh, the presentation side at the time on that. Uh, just one question while we're while we're on the ramp is the do you actually use the inbox anymore or is it uh, has it essentially been replaced by on ramp? It, the inbox has been replaced, so the inbox mm -hmm. now is is down in the uh, in all the perspectives that uh, that are hid hidden. So I've actually taken it off my view because I, I find no no use for it because whatever's in the inbox is duplicated on the ramp anyway. Okay, so I might be jumping ahead a little bit, but it sounds like uh, before anything gets onto the taxiway, it needs to be cleared from the on-ramp area. You can think of it as an airport. Before the, the airplane can get off the ramp, it's got to know where it's going, it's got to know where it's headed, it's got to have all this information. So uh, exactly the same with this. We've got to know uh, that it's a project. We've got to know roughly how long it's going to take. Uh, and we've got to have some sort of tagging to say uh, where it's heading to or, or what. So essentially you want to have enough information added to it to the point it actually becomes useful and actionable. And that's, that's and so right, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So on the taxing side of things, this is uh, an area that I use on my review side of things. So I will review this usually on a daily basis. Uh, primarily it's it's there to look at on a weekly basis as part of my weekly review um, but I do perform daily reviews and they will take about an hour I'll go into that uh, shortly uh, about my reviews but they I spend about an hour every morning uh, reviewing what's happened previously uh, what I'm planning to do and uh, any uh, other bits and pieces that are, are causing me trouble in between so on the taxiway, we've that it'll be a mixture of a mixture of project work. So here I'm looking at uh, starting a, a thing on Skillshare. So I'm trying to create a class title. I'm I'm looking to see what the class title is going to be uh, and how to set it up. Um, down here uh, in health, I've got uh, my repeat med medication that's coming up because it's it's due for the 12th of June. And also I got this flu jab reminder to make sure I, I remind myself that uh, I've got to have that flu jab. The same will go for all the other areas. They will just hold uh, what is currently available or first available actions that I need to be looking at as I build my daily plan. So first of all, I want to make sure it contains everything from these, this, these areas. So I've got the projects areas and I've got miscellaneous. I check to make sure, again, it's got the estimated duration in place. It's first available. It has tags that are active or on hold. It's not a, it's not a project or group. Uh, and finally, it's uh, with the flags as well. So it's not flagged. Um, it isn't tagged with the, uh, the today tag, uh, and also it's not uh, due soon, and, and that's because later on I've got areas that I need to uh, to pick up, uh, areas in the workflow that pick up the flagged items, the today items, and, and the due items. Uh, again, under the uh, the groupings, I will group under individual actions. I won't group under projects uh, at the moment. I group those actions by projects. And then I've got the, uh, I've sorted by the due date. So if they do happen to have a due date, I will, uh, that will be prioritized in that list. So that's the taxiing. So taxiing is just basically a waiting area. I've got things off the ramp. I, I've made sure that I understand exactly what the, each of the tasks is on about. It's not costing me any time or effort anymore. 
in the long term. I got rid of that. It's now on the taxiway. It's in my line of sight. I'm sat up in the control tower. I can see they're all moving around and uh, getting ready to take off. The next uh, thing I move to is the runway itself. Now, I used to have a workflow that had a due perspective in it. Uh, the runway is, is basically your due perspective. So it's everything that's, that's coming up that's due to be, uh, to be done. So in here, I'll have I got to visit my father. Um, I visit my father every other day uh, during lockdown, make sure he's okay and uh, he's getting all the food that he requires. And again, on this SAP project, that I'm currently doing uh, with uh, one of my clients in work. I've got to oversee an assessment workshop tomorrow. So we have a, uh, a video conferencing in place uh, and that I will pick up as well. So that's coming through on the, on the runway. Now that runway, I will, the runway item, I will have a, again, I will be looking at during my daily review. Uh, I'm pulling, putting that together to form my list of tasks that I want to uh, undertake. What I will do is that during the review, if I feel that today's the day that I'm going to visit my father, it's due, uh, I will add a today tag onto it and the today tag will move me into an in-flight uh, status. Uh, and again, with the projects, uh, with the uh, SAP example there, uh, the oversee uh, assessment, if on the oversee I will I add the today tag onto it. This will then be taken and uh, added to uh, the in flight. So this is built. Uh, the runway is uh, by looking at what's remaining. Has it got an estimate again? Um, this is the the main one. Is it, is it due soon? I've got the due soon set in my uh, settings to two days. I didn't like it longer. I don't like it longer than that, but I don't like it. I definitely don't like it down too short. So I need to give myself uh, some uh, room for doing some work to set up. Uh, if it was a meeting that I was due to go to, which I often do, uh, I need some time to actually read up documentation that I've been given, or it may be that I've got to send documentation out because it's one of my meetings. Okay, uh, none of the following. Uh, not tagged with today, not flagged, uh, and not on hold. Uh, and those are just making sure that they're not picked up in the other perspectives. This is already picked up in the in-flight perspective. And flag is, is in an emergency perspective. And uh, again, we'll see that in a sec. In-flight is everything that I'm currently working on. So this will be what I'll be working on today. Uh, and that will, obviously, I've got the daily review. I've got uh, some test task in there. I got learn on many focus in there. Just been bought the, uh, the Apple Mac. So I've got to be setting that up as well. And I got weekly accounts to, uh, to look at. Uh, and I do a daily journal to complete as well. So those, uh, that's the pieces of work that I, I have currently running. Uh, and these, these are pieces of work that I've been working on today, actually. So as you can see, that's, uh, they're all set with the today flag. So uh, as far as daily review is concerned, I, I've already done that. Uh, and I've done my journal as well. How is this set up? Again, it's, it's looking at, at what is available. It's not a, a project or a group, so I'm making sure I'm just picking up a task. It can be flagged or, or it can have the today uh, tag on it. So I'm picking up the flagged, which are emergencies, and I'm picking up the today tag, which uh, I set in my morning review. So what I'll do is I'll just quickly whisk over these. The stop uh, stopover one is basically on hold. So quite often with a project, uh, certainly projects in work, I may have a task that actually pauses. This could be because I'm waiting for another task to finish. It has a relationship with another task. So I will put it on hold. So this is where I have all the hold items. And then at any time I can start it up again. Uh, arrival is everything that's finished. I have emergencies. Uh, now, this could be anything that comes up during the day. Uh, quite often, I'll have, there's always an emergency during the daytime. So I will pick that emergency up. Here, I will put a flag on it, and anything that's flagged will, will be highlighted, put in the in flight uh, perspective, and identified as, a, as an emergency itself. I, I don't tend to use due dates unless they're true 
due dates. And as far as milestones are concerned within a project, and this is more on the professional side of things, uh, anything that has a, a fixed due date on it uh, will form probably a milestone within my project plan itself. Uh, and so I, I've just created a perspective uh, for that in here. So that's, uh, that's it uh, as far as the, uh, the workflow is concerned. I do want to make sure that we are um, covering some of the shortcuts uh, that I've created. So let's, uh, let's just uh, run one of the shortcuts that I, I run on a, on a daily basis. Now you saw that I, on my in-flight perspective, I had a list of tasks that I wanted to perform. Now the trouble is that I work on a, on a time-based approach to uh, managing my day. Everything is blocked out and I have five hours blocked out for tasks that I need to be uh, working on. So anything from projects to uh, uh, anything from my areas of focus. We come up with all the lists of tasks that I've got planned for today. It's also picking up the uh, how much I've estimated duration wise for that task. It knows that I have 300 minutes uh, prepared for today that I want to, to be able to manage uh, my tasks. And down here, it tells me I've, I've actually scheduled a total of 290 minutes. So there is still 10 minutes left in my plan or in my backlog, so I tend to call it in, uh, in work. So that's got a very quick way of identifying exactly what I've got running, uh, what I've got planned today. Does it fit in with what I, I want to do? Um, if it doesn't, uh, then I can go back and add or I can take away some of the tasks. In this case, I probably leave it as it is and just be happy with the 10 minutes and have a cup of coffee uh, in place of it. Let's just quickly jump into to the way this is set up. I use Launch Cuts, which is a, another tool. Um, I'm sure that if you know anything about shortcuts, it's, uh, its downfall is the fact that if you've got 200, 300 shortcuts, trying to find one of them is, is a nightmare. Um, what Launch Cuts does is give, gives us a tool that allows us to actually tag the shortcuts and be able to actually identify those tags and, and get to those tags pretty quickly. Okay, what I do is I just do some initialization at the front here, so we'll ignore that for now. Um, the next thing I do is uh, I go through OmniFocus and I bring back, first of all, I bring back a list of items that have tags with today in them. So this is bringing back all the items, all the uh, tasks that I have items uh, set aside for that. And I store that uh, in, a, uh, in a variable. Uh, again, I do another search within uh, OmniFocus, and uh, in this one, I do a search for things that are flagged. So everything that's flagged, uh, I want to bring back all those items. Then I go through, and for every single item on both of those lists, I do a loop. I do a repeat loop, uh, and I do some calculations uh, based on those uh, um, all of those items, I, I add them together uh, and create a total for the total number of minutes that I have planned. So then I then break it down. Um, this is where I just set up a different uh, output. So this one is, a, if I've over planned, it will come up with uh, some text. If I have some time left, it comes up with this text. And finally, if I have planned exactly on the five hours uh, that I set aside, then uh, it'll jumps up and down and claps its hand and does everything else. But uh, that's basically that. I'm happy to, uh, I'm happy to pass that over to you at some point, Tim, to put on your website. Yeah, that sounds great. And this is an example, just shows how deep you can go with shortcuts. And if you yep. don't fully understand the mechanics of this, you could still make use of it uh, and maybe make a few little minor tweaks. The next, uh, the next one I want to go in um, is this new project one. Uh, this is a whopper. Uh, it's a huge, uh, huge beast of a thing. Um, again, I'm using uh, launch cuts. Um, I, this works with uh, OmniFocus. Uh, it works with, uh, it's talking to notes. It's talking to iCloud and it's using something called Data Jar. And it also talks to Airtable as well. 
So what I do is when I create a project, one of the first things I will want to do is create a unique header for it. Okay. So I want to create that unique ID that I mentioned uh, earlier on. So what this will do is that it will ask you for your title of the project. Uh, and you give that title and it will go away to this, what I call the black box. Uh, and this is where um, a lot of my shortcut coding uh, is focused on nowadays, is that where I'm using a lot of areas within a shortcut repeatedly, I take that out and put it into a, a separate shortcut, which basically has a single input and a single output. And what happens in the middle of it, I really don't care as long as I get out of it what it's supposed to do. You can't call it from anywhere else. You can only call it directly through the as a shortcut uh, run here. So this one is, is creating that unique ID and this goes away and it goes into something called data jar and it will take a value uh, that I have for the uh, project ID and it will use that value uh, as the the next uh, unique number in the, the list for the project. Once I come back out, I then increment that value by one and I uh, output that value to uh, uh, data jar. So data jars incremented by one and I'm ready for the, for the next. Right, the next thing I do is in iCloud, I create a folder. Remember I talked about para? Now this is creating a folder unique to the project. So this is where all my project items will go within this projects folder. So I've created a projects folder uh, and it creates the project ID and that ID will then form the folder name within iCloud. So I was running this on Dropbox, but uh, recently decided to, uh, to go back to iCloud uh, just for um, simplicity's sake, really. And I didn't want to carry too many subscriptions around with me. Okay, I use Apple Notes to hold my notes at the moment. One of the things I have with Apple Notes is that the, uh, the linking between Apple Notes and uh, shortcuts is, is, is abysmal. Uh, there is a way of doing it, but it's uh, too much of a manual process. What I do is I, take, I generate a UUID, uh, a unique identifier, uh, using Toolbox Pro, which is another uh, tool set that you can get for uh, shortcuts. Uh, and within there, I uh, then create a, a unique identifier that I slap onto the note, the Apple note. And all that allows me to do is very, very quickly, I can then search for that ID and immediately it'll take me to the correct note uh, within Apple notes. It's just a, a quicker way of, of doing things uh, instead of actually doing it manually. OmniFocus, I create a task paper text uh, and in this task paper text, all I'm doing here is giving it the unique identifier, uh, giving it a tag of project because it helps me to identify them in some of the other shortcuts uh, if I put this tag on it. And also within the notes section of OmniFocus and this project, I put that UUID. So from here, I can actually uh, quickly identify the, uh, the notes uh, section. And so that's fired off. What I also do, I grab uh, the output from when I run the task. So as soon as I run the task and create the entry in OmniFocus, OmniFocus will then return to me the URL for uh, that project or, or that task. And I can then take that information and actually save it or update the, uh, the note that I've already created. So I'll update the note now and I will put in there the direct link to OmniFocus task using that, the output from, from this chap uh, as well. Here we are at the end of the shortcut. The last thing we do here is that we create a row in the Airtable database uh, within the projects table. Uh, and this is done via running another shortcut called BB uh, project table entry. So let's go into Airtable and here is the projects table. I'll just go back and just show you 
Uh, I've got a set of tables here, one to keep all my shortcuts, documentation, blog material, lessons, and uh, here's the projects one that we are currently looking at. So I'll pop into there. And in here, you can see that if I click on this, we can see that this table holds the project ID. So this is the ID that's created in the shortcut and that's passed over here automatically and placed into this field. Uh, in this field, we I hold the date created. So that's the date the shortcut ran. So that's uh, defined as the date created. We use that uh, as the date created. Uh, description field is a manual uh, field in that uh, I will type in something, some remark, uh, just so that I can have a little bit extra description about what the project is all about. The next field is a status field. And within this field, uh, I have a, a list of options like tags. Uh, here they are, five of them. Uh, currently, this uh, project is in progress. Okay, It could be put on hold, uh, complete, dropped, or not started at all. So that's that one. Um, I can also hold the project type. So I've got a field that allows me to select project types. This is more experimental at the moment. So I'm playing around with it, but uh, the, the projects I run, a lot of them are agile, a lot of them are waterfall, and again, a lot of them are a mixture of the two. So they may be a bit agile, a bit waterfall. Uh, waterfall, I mean, very sequential. So one thing follows another, where uh, agile is very iterative. So the th things keep repeating uh, and you do small bits at a time. I've also got a not known in there because a lot of the stuff I do around the house for myself, whether it's phoning up the dentist or cleaning the floors or things like that, uh, the project's not known. It's it's not a project methodology, really. Um, the next thing I do, and again, this is manual, is that I have a, a goals field. And in here, I link to the I have a goals table and you can barely see it down here at the moment, but uh, I have an aerial uh, areas table as well. Uh, and so these two hold rows in them relating to uh, goals and relating to the areas. So here uh, I've gone in and set this up uh, as some viable income for to help my uh, income coming in in the future. So it's uh, looking at ideas to help finance things. So thinking about uh, financing, we go into the areas and Again, manually, I set it up uh, and in this area, I've set it up and uh, finances. The next two fields are automatically filled in. So this will hold the uh, OmniFocus uh, link that I use to link back to OmniFocus. And here we have a the notes identifier that I have put in the Apple note so that I can quickly and easily identify that. It's very rare that I put attachments into the project in, in this set. I've I've put it in for completeness, but it's uh, so far it's always been empty. So that's the uh, the table in Airtable. I use it quite often to do reports. Uh, I can do reports on this and pull the information out, uh, especially want, if someone wants to an update. Uh, this will form part of my uh, project update uh, as well. So that's it for that. What I might do now is if I go back into shortcuts. I suppose one of the best things to do is actually show you it running. It's not a spectacular um, shortcut. Uh, there's nothing wonderful going to happen. It'll just drop through, ask me what the uh, title of the project is, and then it'll go off and create the project uh, unique ID and then update the uh, iCloud notes, OmniFocus, and finally uh, Airtable. So let's run it. Let's put in new project for learn OmniFocus. Okay, so I've uh, entered the project title, so I click OK. That goes away. It's created the unique identifier. It's put a, an entry in iCloud. It's created the note. It's created the entry in OmniFocus and also the entry in Airtable. So the best thing for us to do is go and just check that uh, that is the case. So let's go into Airtable and down the bottom, hopefully, there we have it. We have the, uh, sorry, there we have it. That was an old one. 
uh, we have the one that we just entered new project for learn omnifocus uh, and it's given a unique identifier pkj255 uh, let's put that creation date in so it created today hasn't added any goals description uh, area at the moment uh, it has added the omnifocus link and it has added the unique identifier so usually i will go in uh, and just fill in these fields uh, once i've created this so let's go and have a look at icloud so we'll pop into icloud uh, we're in the shortcuts folder and under shortcuts there is also a projects folder that we're currently in and in here we have the project already uh, sorry the folder already created so the shortcuts gone away gone into icloud and in the area that i asked it to so under power projects uh, remember that para uh, setup that i have so under projects it's created another folder specifically to hold any documentation related to uh, that project uh, and there it is there with the project name so the next thing to do let's pop into notes see if we have that notes uh, entry uh, this is one I I did earlier just to check things are working so here we go again pkj255 it's created the note and I build it up with a template and in here it's got the title of the project the date it was created and time the identifier so this is that unique identifier that i i mentioned uh, that we put on this and also it's added the omnifocus task link as well so down here what i normally do for this note is i use it as a journal uh, every project i have a journal for and i will update that journal on a daily basis so for example today i will add in there started project okay and, and i would update the, all this on a daily basis and this goes for all the projects so uh, that's the reason for producing the notes section so if we just pop into omnifocus now last one just to see if we had that uh, new omnifocus uh, project created and here it is it's uh, pretty nice remember this is uh, an old one there but you can see by the numbers this is this was 254 this is 255 so that incremental number within the data jar is working that's created the project and title and within the project and the note section it's put the uh, user identifier for the note so there we go that is my uh, workflow i hope it is helpful i hope i gave you just one little thing that will help you in the following days whether it was something I said, did, or, or whatever, I'll show you. I have had a question of what about the unique identifiers? Why do I use them? Well, it's, it's mainly professionally, I use the unique identifiers for invoicing. So when I invoice a client, I will put the unique identifier on there so that I can relate it back to the right project, because I may be doing uh, several pieces of work for a client. And so I'll be able to catch it individually and uh, invoice the client properly. We also use it uh, because a lot of the projects will fall under what's called a program. So uh, a program will have a, a set of related projects. So all the projects need to run and once they're all complete, the program is, is finished. But what often happens is that we can end up with project names duplicated within those uh, uh, projects under the program. And so to eliminate that, we also, the other reason is for using this is that we put that unique identifier on it that's that's primarily the reason i don't necessarily need the, the unique identifier when i'm dealing with uh, my own projects uh, and tasks but you will have noticed that within the areas table let's pop over there just quickly uh, i do have uh, unique identifiers on these and uh, this is just because i ran the same routine as i do for all the other projects uh, it's easier because it creates that notes entry it creates the uh, table entry for me as well uh, it keeps everything up to date so uh, that's the only reason but i don't really uh, for the areas of focus uh, i don't really need the uh, the identifier there that's it thank you for your time thank you for listening i hope uh, this all makes sense and uh, please just uh, mail me at uh, mike at kirkham-jones.co 
and uh, I'll get back to you. Uh, have a look at my site. I've just got a part two of the blog going up, uh, which goes into detail about the ramp and tells you also the, the reasoning in depth behind me using the time estimation. Okay, thanks for now. Bye. Okay, well, thanks again. And uh, thanks everyone who is here live. Uh, thanks to everyone who is watching a recording of this session and hope to see you again soon.